Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Yesterday we were speaking about the Armizo condition plus this additional curvature condition here, which is called the, um, which combined with this Armizo is called Wolf condition. Now the question is that it is very important that we have a much better geometric understanding of this Wolf condition, and how does it avoid this short step length? And once it is done, we will show that we will show that. In fact, the Wolf condition can, the there could be an alpha, we can show the existence of an alpha which will satisfy the Wolf condition. Now, it is important to understand this function phi alpha once again. So, let us look at this function phi alpha which we introduced in the last lecture for given k. Of course, this phi alpha you can say phi k alpha also does not matter, but okay, let us just keep phi alpha for the time being. We know that we are analyzing things at the kth iteration, and this is the descent direction. Now, what happens if I put alpha equal to 0? If I put alpha equal to 0, it will become fxk. Now, you know that f of xk is not the minimizer. Now, which means in the neighborhood, around the neighborhood of that point x k, there is a point where the function value is better, means it is, it is lesser. In the sense along the direction d k, the function value is actually decreasing. So, for certain alpha between 0 to alpha naught, which since d k is a de descent direction, for all alpha element of some alpha naught, I know that f of x k plus alpha d k is less strictly less than f of x k. So, this would allow us to draw the function better in the sense that uh, you see that here, so if this is my f of x k, so this is alpha and this is my phi alpha. So, up to certain threshold alpha naught here, my function value is decreasing, is less than this f of x k. Then of course, after that it can increase and then it can decrease and whatever. So, this is my phi alpha, but the threshold alpha naught till this threshold alpha naught it decreases. Now, my line L alpha, so here what does it mean? It shows that phi of alpha is less than equal to phi of 0 for all or rather strictly less than phi of 0 for all alpha belonging to between 0 and alpha naught, could be equal to alpha naught, but okay. So, phi alpha is a continuous function because um, this f is continuous because of function f is differentiable. Now, this line L alpha, goes like this and cuts up. So, what happens is you might question okay, whether L alpha is below this, uh, okay, L alpha could be like this also. It depends on the type of slope you take. If you take a moderate slope here, the line L alpha which you know is nothing but f of x k plus c 1 times alpha into grad f x k into d k, inner product d k. 
So, you take a proper slope, a proper modulation of C 1, then you know for a large chunk, the L alpha line lies above this graph and that is a crucial fact. So, you can say okay, this is my acceptable alpha naught, this is my acceptable alphas. Now, what the curvature condition does is the following. If you look at phi alpha, curvature condition is the second condition. So, curvature condition plus or meso condition gives you the wolf condition. So, if you look at phi alpha here, so this phi alpha is this function again f of x k plus alpha d k. So, now let us do one thing, I take a derivative of this because it is a function. This derivative, if you compute out very carefully, is by applying chain rule. So, first the gradient of this into the derivative of this, which is nothing but d k. So, it is So, it is slope of the function phi dash at any alpha, any alpha say this alpha, this is an alpha. So, this is nothing but phi dash alpha, the slope of this function, slope of this line is phi dash alpha, right. Now, what happens is that if you look at phi dash 0, If you look at phi dash 0, then phi dash 0 is nothing but grad of f x k d k. So, now basically then because C 1 is less than 1, this is bigger than C 1 times say alpha times there is some alpha. Sorry, I would rather say this C 1 into So, the slope of this, now the slope of L dash, what is the slope of L, 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 L dash alpha, what is that, what is L dash alpha? L dash alpha is nothing but C 1 into grad f x k d k, it does not matter what is the alpha. So, L dash 0 is also this L dash 0 is also nothing but about the same thing. So, what I am expecting is that the slope of this line must be bigger. So, so phi dash 0 is bigger than L dash 0, L dash alpha thus, thus this slope which is which is natural because C 1 is. So, C 1 is between 0 and 1. So, this whole thing is nothing but a fraction of this. So, this one is bigger than this one. Now, you can say okay, these are all negative bigger than uh, this one in this sense. Uh, sorry, uh, I make a mistake fraction of this one. So, because sorry, I made a mistake. This is negative, this is negative. So, now you take a fraction. So, fraction of the whole thing. So, it is minus 1 you take minus half. So, minus half would become bigger than minus 1. So, this slope has to be smaller. So, this slope has to be smaller means what? I, I made a mistake here. It had to be less than equal to those who had recorded greater than equal to please change it. it no, this is not positive, this is negative. This decay is a descent direction. So, this slope, this slope has to be smaller means what? That the angle. So, this is this is less negative and this is more negative. More negative means what? So, this is an obtuse angle, this is the slope okay, which is the negative slope and I should be 
should have some another slope. I should have a line whose slope is like this. So, my, let me consider a line whose slope is like this. So, slope of the function at 0, so slope of the function at 0 is this, which is less than c 1 times this. So, when the obtuse angle is more, the tangent would be lesser and so here the tangent, so here this slope, this one that is for slope at phi dash 0 can be viewed as a slope of a line, can we can basically draw a tangent to the curve of phi dash 0 and wherever this is cutting the line, cutting the x axis, that point till that point I would not accept any alpha. So, beyond this for all alphas, this whatever slope you are taking, whatever slope you are taking, all of the slopes would satisfy this condition. See some slopes would be for example, okay, here uh, this is up to alpha naught, right. So, here you know the slopes are all coming down. So, this particular slope has to be for all this from starting point from here, the slope, this slope is always less than this slope which means that find an alpha. So, corresponding to this alpha on the curve, corresponding to this alpha on the curve, I start accepting my alpha. So, I am not very near to the starting point 0. So, this is the whole idea that you have another curve whose slope is another you have you basically draw a tangent to this curve at the point alpha equal to 0 tangent to the curve phi alpha and then you see that where that curve or where that tangent cuts the x axis from there you consider from right to that till alpha naught you consider your acceptable alpha. So, this is your acceptable alpha now this part is your acceptable alpha. So, this is basically the idea of the uh, wolf condition and now we will write down a very fundamental result which says that the wolf condition actually gets satisfied. The wolf condition gets satisfied for very, very simple uh, scenario. So, let us write down the result and then we will prove it on the blackboard. So, let f f be a function from r n to r is continuously differentiable which means smooth. So, it is continuously differentiable let d k be the direction of descent at x k. x k and assume that f is bounded below on the ray. So, it becomes a one dimensional minimization problem you see f is bounded below on the ray. this then if we have this constants pick some constants there exists then if this happens there exists intervals of step length satisfying the wolf condition ok. 
So, this is something you need to really remember, it is not that you need to be very, very bothered about it, but it is good to have an idea of the proof, so that you get into the habit of knowing that even in this issues of numerical optimization, we have to be really careful of taking care of the mathematics, whatever statement we make, we, we need to prove it, even if you are making this sort of approximations with Wolf conditions etcetera and our meso condition trying to find the alpha approximately, it is imperative on us that our alpha that whatever we want such an alpha exists. So, when we run the algorithm we are sure that if you are doing such an operation, this operation would actually give me something. Okay, so, now we will go for the proof. Now, you see what happens is that just after alpha equal to 0 that is x equal to x k, the function value decreases quite sharply, because that is what would happen till an interval alpha naught. And then it starts increasing a bit and goes up and you know this line L alpha, this is unbounded below, because if you take the line L alpha, this f x k plus c 1 times alpha into grad f x k d k. Now, grad f x k d k is negative, c 1 is positive, alpha is positive. So, I can now, if this is negative, I can make this alpha going towards infinity and make the whole thing negative and larger in the negative sense. So, this value will keep on dropping, keep on dropping, keep on dropping, but an, but it will not have a bound. Now, f is assumed to have a bound. So, basically now, this line L alpha at the very beginning, because what would happen is, I can always have an alpha. So, for a, till alpha naught. So, here, so till alpha naught, the function values are decreasing. So, f of x k plus alpha d k is strictly minus f x naught, f x k is strictly less than 0. So, these are fixed for a, for all or for a given alpha. So, if, if alpha is between 0 and alpha naught by looking at this diagram, then this difference is strictly less than 0. So, it is some number some k. Some. Now, I can multiply this, this grad f x by this alpha part and multiply by a chosen c 1 between 0 and 1, so that I can make this. So, this number, this alpha k can be made to be less than c 1 into, you can choose c 1 like this. right. We can always choose c 1 like this, because this is approximately this value, because by a, by, by a Taylor's theorem what would happen is by Taylor's theorem you can write this as nothing, but or, or by the very basic definition of differentiability you can write this as small o of alpha. So, now this thing, so which means that this thing is strictly less than 0, this whole thing, this thing is strictly less than 0. Now, I know that this is also strictly less than 0. Now, what I can do for alpha very, very small, I can now if I divide by alpha, I will have f of x k plus alpha d k minus f of x k divided by alpha is equal to grad of f x k d k plus O alpha by alpha. Now, this is true for any alpha. If I make the alpha very, very small, I can make this thing very, very small and this will be this negative, it negative part will overrun this even if it is positive. So, this will basically become negative. Now, what I can do, this is of course, I can make the whole thing to be less than some c 1 between 0 and 1, this is of course true. 
So, this whole thing is negative, this is less than a fraction of this. So, fraction of this is bigger than I can take a C 1 in such a way that this whole thing is less than a fraction of this, because this will become very, very small. So, this will dominate and hence this can be made to be less than a fraction of this, which would be bigger in the negative sense, which will be more near 0. So, then what happens is that, so for the for alpha, for all alpha between 0 and alpha naught at least, right, I can have f of x k plus alpha d k less than equal to f of x k plus c 1 into alpha times grad f x k d k. So, I meet the Armizo condition. Now, you see I have said that up to alpha naught till alpha naught this point my Armizo conditions are met. So, maybe I take some alpha here. Right, or some alpha just slightly less than alpha naught. Now, in this interval, this is a continuous function in this in and in this interval it will have a minimum. Okay. Possibly the minimum is here and then it is going up like this. Now, what happens because this is unbounded, this line, there will be a first point where it first intersects this curve. So, now I can find a band of alpha, right. So, here it will intersect this curve. So, if you observe from the geometrical picture that all the curve now is lying below this line. So, from this alpha star where it intersects, I will have the sufficient decrease condition holding. So, that is so if alpha dash or alpha star, if alpha star is the first point or the is a first point of intersection, then for all alpha for all alpha between alpha and alpha star basically. So, for all these function values are less than f of x k. So, here was my f of x k value. Here what would happen is that in this particular picture starting from alpha dash all the function values are basically less than f x k, f x k is here. All the function values are less than f x k. So, you know that what happens is this thing comes down after f x k in a neighborhood and then it starts rising up. If the function value comes down which takes the minimum value in this certain interval and then it starts rising up where it comes and hits this curve that is it becomes equal. So, uh, then at that point what we would have is that f of x k plus alpha double dash alpha dash alpha star d k is f of x k plus alpha c 1 and alpha star 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 f of x k into d k. So, this is what will happen. So, you see we so we, we have found the Armizo condition. So, this alpha star at which it intersects for all alpha star which is less for all alpha element of alpha star for alpha star we would have this. So, for all alpha element less than alpha star we would basically have this that is what it, you can see from the diagram. Now, the next point is that we shall use the mean value theorem. So, let us do that here in this thing is that 
Now, you have got this alpha star. So, let us use f of the mean value theorem alpha star times d k minus f of x k this is equal to alpha star times grad of f of x k plus some alpha double dash d k, where this thing is lying between this, this point and this point is a point inside lying in the interior of the line segment joining these two points. Now, what we have? We also have this expression. That was from there. Because at this point, alpha star, it comes and intersects the, uh, the line comes and intersects the curve. So here, what you can do is this. Now look at this this difference. So what what I am having is the following. I am having so this would imply that grad of f of x k plus alpha star d k alpha double double dash d k. Uh, d k is equal to this one c 1 times now c 2 is this is a negative quantity now c 2 is lesser than c 1 right now c 2 is lying between sorry bigger than c1 c2 is lying between c1 and 1 so naturally this would be this would be if since c1 is lesser and this would be less negative than this one so c1 is a positive quantity which is lesser than c2 that is since c1 is lesser than c2 this quantity would be less negative than this quantity. So, my alpha dash double dash is the required. So, alpha double dash is actually lying between alpha star and 0. So, alpha double dash is actually my required alpha dash by we in for which the Wolf condition is satisfied. So, here we have a proof. Now, we are going to discuss about how do I actually apply this sufficient decreasing decrease. So, this sufficient decrease is done by a method called backtracking. So, how do I choose my uh, backtracking principle? So, how do I choose my step length by using backtracking principle? Now, this is also called the Armizo principle due to the mathematician Armizo. So, this is quite often applied in algorithms and you know to get a result quite fast. So, you choose alpha bar some alpha bar greater than 0 and choose a row between 0 and 1 and c between 0 and 1 that is a c 1 actually. Now, initialize alpha with alpha bar some alpha bar you have chosen now repeat until repeat until you have f of x k plus alpha d k so until so d k is a descent direction So, how do you find this alpha bar? This is the following way. So, if you find an alpha, take an alpha, it is alpha bar, and you see that this condition is not met for a given that for chosen C. This condition is not met. What you do? So, if this condition is not met, you reduce 
alpha by a certain amount, you take a fraction of alpha and say if it is alpha bar in the starting, so you take a fraction of alpha bar and put it to the new alpha and then check with the new alpha whether this condition is satisfied with this particular C. If it is not and then go on basically doing, hmm. then when such an alpha is found, set alpha equal to alpha k and terminate. And then x k plus 1, the new point is x k plus alpha k d. Okay. So, this is what is done in actual practice. Now, let me give you uh, one or two examples. For example, how would you find, uh, let me take an ex example from the exercise of no et al. So, let us uh, try to summarize what we have learned in this uh, section on descent directions and finding the control step length, which we, by which you control the movement from x k. So, you take a function of two variables and the function of two variables here is x 1 plus x 2 square whole square and we are taking at x the point x as 1 0 and they are giving us a direction d minus 1 1. Now, the question is, is this d a direction of descent from this point 1 0. So, how do I first know that whether I need to have a descent? To have, to have a descent, I first have to find the gradient of this function. So, the gradient of this function Okay. This function, if you look at it, I have to compute this value and this value at the points 1 0. So, what is my del f del x 1 here? Del f del x 1 is 2 times x 1 plus x 2 square and into x 1 is 1. So, by chain rule. So, del of del x 2 is 2 times x 1 plus x 2 square into 2 x 2. Now, if I put here, I compute the value at 1 0, that is I put x 1 equal to 1 and x 2 equal to 0, then what I get here is 2 and if I put x 1 equal to 1 and x 2 equal to 0, then what I get here is 0. So, this value at 1 0 is nothing but 2 0 and this is not equal to 0 and hence this point is not a point of local minimizer. So, this is not a critical point. So, then I have to move to a better point from 1 0. So, what I do to check that whether this is actually a gradient or not. To do this, I have to check this one. I have to see whether grad of f x into d, what is, what is this value? Which means, I take to take the inner product del of del x 1 into 1 plus, sorry into minus 1 plus del of del x 2, both are obviously computed at the point 1 0, 1 sorry uh, point 1 0 into 1. So, this computed at the point 1 0 is 2, 2 into minus 1, this computed at the point 1 0 is 0, so 0 into 1. So, what I get is minus 2, which is strictly less than 0, showing that this is indeed a descent direction.
Now, let me give you a homework from the book of No Sezal and Wright and I expect that you really uh, go ahead and look into this homework because that would give you little practice because till the beginning we had not done uh, any practice here. So, this course is essentially a course at the advanced graduate level and big, I mean advanced uh, undergrad level and beginning graduate level. So, we really need to pull up our socks and look into examples. So, now I give you an example uh, a very important test function which is used in optimization to do the job and do various demonstrations of algorithms. So, here this is called the Rosenbrock function. Let me again show you the reference of the book that I am using here. It is a book called Numerical Optimization and it is uh, written by Noseth Allen Wright. It is published by Springer and it is now available in Indian edition. I have already mentioned it, but only minimizer of the problem. Can you show that? So, hence, can you show? that it is the only minimizer of the problem. So, I am giving a apostrophe here. So, I am asking you also is this a global or a local minimum. Tomorrow we will start discussing the steepest descent method and after we discuss steepest descent method, I will give you a solution of this problem. But I expect all of you to really have a look at this problem at home and try to do this problem. This is a very, very important function and has uh, many, many uh, give, gives a lot of demonstrations when you study numerical algorithms. Now, what I want to um, ask you is the following function f x equal to norm of x square, x is in R 2. So, f is a function from R 2 to R and my f of x 1, x 2 is equal to x 1 square plus x 2 square, which is norm x square. Now, let me write down an iterative algorithm to minimize it. That is, I am writing down uh, some sort of iteration. That is, how I go from x k to x k plus 1, right. Now, let me take uh, k th iteration is of the form. into cos k and sin k. What I am asking is to show that this also we can discuss tomorrow after we discuss steepest descent method. So, this just show this. So, so, this would be two problems for you, which you have to show. But here you see the iterates, the function value is decreasing. Think about the geometry of this, but please keep a note that you have to do this. Thank you very much for today and tomorrow we will get into this exciting thing of uh, steepest descent method and we will explain use steepest descent method for the particular class of quadratic optimization problem where the Hessian matrix is positive definite and we will show how we can understand rates of convergence and other issues related to an optimization algorithm. 
So, the optimization algorithm in the unconstrained sense is not just solving z f x equal to 0 that equation, but it also has to entail that every x k plus 1, every k plus 1 is iteration, my function value has to be better than f of x k. So, that is that is the important thing that one has to realize one does when one uses the optimization algorithm. So, thank you very much for today. See you tomorrow. Thank you.